Hey guys, welcome to Photography Talk, episode number four. We're midway through October and I feel it would be a injustice if I didn't at least sport my Oktoberfest shirt at least once. The problem is, I don't even have a beer right now, but my only excuse is early in the morning, so, and we have things to chat about, so let's get moving. Now I just got back from spending a couple days up at the Vid Summit in LA. And I have to say, it was a good time. If you don't know Vid Summit, it is a two day YouTube and video marketer conference. Now during this time, I was able to meet a ton of amazing content creators like Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, Jared Pollitt, and a bunch more. Now some of the topics covered included how to grow your business from leveraging YouTube, startup tips, and how to fire up your creative engine, storytelling, and so much more. Now when you think about growth options for photographers and how competitive the market is right now, you can grow vertically by staying in your space. By that I mean, if you're a portrait photographer, for example, you spend your time fighting and clawing to the top in a highly congested portrait market. However, if you decide to horizontally grow at the same time, becoming a hybrid shooter opens up so many opportunities for you to grow horizontally. Now, considering most cameras these days have pretty decent video recording options, so it's not like you have to go out there and buy a ton of new gear. Actually, you can likely get away with using what you already have. And when you can tell stories with your videos, these skills, guys, there are brands and businesses that will hire you for these skills. On the other hand, you might wanna get in front of a camera and create a YouTube channel teaching others those portrait skills that you have. Again, talking about growing horizontally and creating a larger gap between your skills and the other noise out in the marketplace. Now circling back around, after attending Vid Summit for the first time, guys, this is a venue that I would highly recommend to those looking to create new markets for themselves and get further in front of the pack. I mean, seriously, there was like 58 speakers there at the event, unloading value bomb after value bomb. It was a good time. Speaking of Vid Summit, while I was there, I had the chance to check out the new backpack that Peter McKinnon and Nomadic just rolled out on Kickstarter, and gang, this thing is sweet. Their initial goal was $100,000. At the time of this recording, they had already surpassed $910,000. It's essentially a photography system with a pack that has a side for clothes and a side for gear. There's tons of little cubes, cubbies, cases, and pockets to keep everything that you have all organized. Now get this. It even has a small lightweight backpack within the main backpack. So whenever you get to wherever it is you're traveling to and you don't wanna lug around that big ass backpack that you have, you can get out and go lean and mean with the small little day pack that's in there. Pretty damn cool. And it's beautifully designed and constructed as well. Now, over the last 10 years, I've tested a ton of camera bags. You know, some good, some bad, a few, have been extraordinary. And for me, this bag really raises the bar in that extraordinary category. Now, is this bag for everybody? No. But considering this thing has been on the market for just a handful of days, and it's creeping up to a million bucks in sales, I don't think I'm the only one impressed with it. You can count on a more detailed review of this bag coming soon. Next, is the Panasonic 10 to 25 lens worth the price of admission? Now, I shoot a lot of video with my Panasonic GH5, and I wanted to test drive their new 10 to 25 lens. So, I borrowed one from our friends at Adorama, and having playing around with this thing for the last week, I got a lot of time behind the lens at Vid Summit, and I have to say, this thing doesn't disappoint. Now, it's crazy fast with a 1.7 aperture, beautifully sharp, and for as big as it is, guys, I was really surprised at how lightweight it was. I would have expected this thing to be a little bit heavier, which is a good thing. Now, at this point, the only downside that I've discovered is that it seems to hunt for autofocus when it's shooting video. Who knows, there might be a firmware already in the works to address this. Now, I will say this, this lens does kick my GH5 in the ass and it really delivers. Now, at the end of the day, I have to say I've been pretty impressed with the lens. Is it something I'm gonna buy? You know, guys, I'm definitely putting some serious thought into it. I'm gonna play around with it for a couple more weeks and let you know where I stand with a little bit more in-depth review coming on it. Shifting gears, researchers in Germany have managed to create a new image sensor with pixel design that could eliminate blown out highlights. Whoa, pretty cool. The new HDR sensor features self-resetting pixels that prevent clipping from occurring. So, in a normal sensor, pixels quit capturing data in highlighted areas once they're fully saturated. When that occurs, any additional data in the highlighted areas becomes lost. 
However, by using advanced circuitry that counts the number of resets in each pixel as well as the charge remaining at the end of the exposure, this new sensor can basically capture unlimited details in highlighted areas. Whether or not this technology makes it into future still cameras remains to be unseen. Now, one of the researchers on the project did say in an interview that they are focusing on developing the technology for video industrial applications instead. Now, talk about an awesome feature to have in your camera, right? Now, leave a comment down below if this is something that you would want in your camera. Did you hear the story about the thief stealing more than $100,000 in gear in less than six minutes? I hate to see stuff like this, but recently a videographer named Peter Kraut was the victim of a burglary in which the thieves took off with over $100,000 in camera gear. The thieves entered the warehouse where Peter's studio is, is by using the builder's door code. Now, it's not quite sure how they got the code, and then, once they got in there, they pried the door open with a crowbar. The biggest loss was a Phantom Flex 4K camera, which had a two terabyte Cinemag in it. The camera alone has a base price of 109,000. What jerks. Now also, they took off with a Sony a7R II and a variety of lenses, and it took them just under six minutes to do their dirty work. Anyway, Peter is asking for help in identifying the suspects who were caught in surveillance footage, and for the people to keep an eye out for this gear you can contact the Newton station of the Los Angeles Police Department with the information using the link in the description below. Next, we have an NFL player who mows down a sideline photographer. Now, if you're a football fan and you've probably seen the, the highlights of Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson getting shoved out of bounds where due to his high speed, he couldn't avoid mowing down a photographer. Now, in some cases like this, you see a player give a cursory look at whoever they just mowed over and then see if they're okay. But in this case, Jackson took the time to ensure the photographer, Shelley Lipton, was okay. In fact, he rushed to her side, picked her up off the ground, gave her a quick cut. Dude, awesome. Now Jackson even sent Lipton a message on Twitter to make sure that she was all right as well. Now Lipton was uninjured, and as a bonus, the photo that she took right before she was hit as a keeper as well. Now, here's something interesting. Security experts say quit making the peace sign in photographs. You know how people often make the peace sign in photos, right? Well, according to one security expert, that's a big no-no these days. That's because you hold your fingers close enough to a camera, like within five feet, someone can use a magnification software and artificial intelligence to extract details of your fingerprints. Now, granted, most people don't have access to AI to steal everybody's fingerprints, but with everything from your phones to safe use of fingerprints for ID, I suppose you can't be safe enough when it comes to flashing your fingerprints on camera. Now to close things off with a bang, I literally got my hands on a couple pre-production Hakodashi RGB LEDs that literally have just jumped into the market. You might be asking, Alex, what's so special about these? There are tons of LED lights on the market. Well, you are absolutely right. However, there are a few things about these lights that I find very interesting and worth taking a look at. Now, this is not a full review. I just wanted to kind of point out a few first impressions. Literally just got my hands on these things and was kind of excited to kind of jibber jabber about them. So let's start off with talking about the size. It's small. It's three by five inches pocket size and weighs 170 grams, which is pretty much on par with a lot of other you know, LED lights in this class. Uh, it has a quarter inch mount on the bottom, which is really cool. Uh, many of the other options out there have these like goofy brackets on there that, you know, frankly, they, they work, but it's just added, you know, kind of clutter on it. Um, but here's where this thing really jumps out. Um, on the back of this here, you have all your pretty much standard manual control. Oh, you know, I look like a, look like a blue smurf here. You have all your manual controls. You have a color LCD screen right here. Um, and But here's where this thing really, really shines. You have this incredibly intuitive app that you can control not only color temperature, RGB color, special effects, and guys, here's the awesome part. You can control single or multiple lights. Now, the reason why this is cool for me, if you look at these lights back here, you know, these are various different lights. Now, right now, this thing is actually synced up with the, let's see, the second one right there. So. If you look at the second box here, you can see right from the app, I'm able to toggle between, oops, so now they're both turning green here. Um, blue, red, uh, I mean, you can, you can toggle through all these colors or you can go with 
you know, custom, you know, colors. You can go, you know, play around with the temperature of it. That thing's bright. At any rate, the reason why this is cool, at least for me, is often cases I'll want to, depending on time of day when I'm shooting videos and so forth, I'll want to control the intensity of these lights. I'll want to sometimes shift the color. And what I sometimes have to do is I have to go over there, manually shift the color, come back here, look at my field monitor to see whether or not it, it meets the color that I'm after. With this, okay, I can control this and the intensity right from here and look at it right within my field monitor without moving. So it makes it much more efficient. Moving forward, these things have a 96 CRI, which it's not the best in the market, but it's pretty close. It has 152 LED lights in it. The color temperature goes from 3000 up to 6500K. Now this isn't the best, but still it's a nice range. You're talking about a power supply of 7.4 uh, volts. It's a rechargeable lithium polymer battery. The light has some really nice specs but the big selling point for me is that app right here that I was telling you about I know this is a feature that many photographers will be happy to see well there you go guys your photography talk for the day if this video was helpful hit the like button down below if you're currently not subscribed hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified as we come out with new videos so with that said my friend we'll see you next week and get out there and take your best shot